Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. Today, we'll be talking about a Chevrolet engine family, which has had an impressive production run of almost 35 years. This engine design was based on the first generation Chevrolet small block V8. It originally saw service in a large portion of Chevrolet's passenger car lineup as the economy option, but went on to become the top option in one of Chevrolet and GMC's most popular truck lines. This engine is the 90 degree Chevrolet V6. The Chevrolet 90 degree V6 debuted for the 1978 model year. It was based on the Chevrolet small block V8 motor sharing the same 4.4 inch bore spacing and 9.025 inch deck height. Many of the internal pieces were interchangeable as well. It was rated at a ridiculously low 95 horsepower and 160 pound-feet of torque. It had an 8.2 to 1 compression ratio and a bore size of 3.5 inches. It had a stroke of 3.48 inches, which it shared with the V8 small block family. It originally came equipped with a Rochester 2GC two-barrel carburetor, but was updated in 1979 with a two-barrel dual-jet carburetor, causing a slight loss in horsepower and torque. The engine was only produced for two years and was replaced in 1980 with a larger version. The 229 cubic inch, or 3.8 liter Chevrolet V6, debuted for the 1980 model year. Its use was expanded from the intermediate cars to the full-size line, and it also jumped into part of the F-body lineup as it was offered as the base option in the Chevrolet Camaro for the final few years of that body style. As an interesting side note, a large number were also sold to the Checker Motor Corporation, who started using it as the base engine in their now iconic taxi and marathon sedans. Compression was increased to 8.6 to 1, and the bore size was increased to 3.63 inches, resulting in an increase in horsepower to 115. Torque went up to 175 foot-pounds. Yes, this was the height of the smog era. In 1981, the engine received the GM Computer Command Control System and its feedback dual-jet carburetor, resulting in a loss of 5 horsepower. In 1982, this engine was upgraded to the middle of the road option in the Camaro, as this was during the dark time when a four cylinder was sold as the base engine and the largest displacement one could get was a small 305 cubic inch V8. Production continued with the other car lines until the end of the 1984 model year. In 1985, displacement was once again increased in the 90 degree V6 to 4.3 liters or 262 cubic inches. Compression was also increased to 9.3 to 1 and fuel injection was also offered on some engine models depending on the car line. Those models not getting fuel injection were given a quadrajet carburetor instead of the previously used dual jet increasing horsepower numbers all around. Its use was also expanded into the Chevy and GMC full-size truck and van lineup. Trucks and vans got a four barrel carburetor and were rated at 155 horsepower, while cars got throttle body fuel injection with a horsepower rating of about 130. The engines did produce an acceptable amount of torque though, with all giving about 210 to 230 foot pounds. In 1988, the 2.8 liter V6 in the Chevy S10 and GMC S15 lineups was phased out and the 4.3 liter V6 took its place as the top engine in the GMC small truck lineup. This is where the engine really hit its stride, as a lot of buyers took advantage of upgrading from the 2.5 liter Iron Duke engine that came standard with these. Throttle body fuel injection was standard, and the engine now produced 160 horsepower, a marked improvement over the 2.8 liters 110. Keep in mind, at this time, Ford's light V6 was only producing 140 horsepower. By 1990, passenger car production of the engine was phased out 
and the engine became exclusively available to truck buyers. The 4.3 saw its next major upgrade for the 1992 model year with the introduction of central port fuel injection. This design used one fuel injector, just like the throttle body systems. However, fuel was fed to each cylinder from the injector by the use of six individual hoses, making this a sort of cross between throttle body and multi-port fuel injection. A balance shaft was also added this year. Horsepower increased to 200 and torque went up to 260 foot-pounds. In 1996, redesigned Vortec heads were added. The engine continued to soldier on with additional changes to keep it competitive with some of the other six-cylinder truck engines on the market all the way to the 2014 model year when it was replaced by a design based on the LT1 small block V8. No video about the GM 90 degree V6 would be complete, however, without talking about its highest performance variant, the turbocharged 4.3 liter V6. Introduced in 1991 for the limited production GMC Cyclone, this engine produced a whopping 280 horsepower and 350 foot-pounds of torque. This helped make the 1991 Cyclone one of the fastest production vehicles made that year. Zero to 60 times were rated at about 4.3 seconds, and in its factory form, it turned out sub 14 second quarter mile times. It included a Mitsubishi TD06-17C turbocharger, a Garrett intercooler, upgraded pistons, a stronger head gasket, improved bearings, and a unique intake manifold. This engine saw service for an additional two years in the GMC Typhoon SUV. We'll have a whole video coming soon on these models as there's a lot to talk about and they need their own video. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Chevrolet 90 degree series of V6 engines. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you on the next one.